Okay guys, so you've been asking us for absolutely ages to see a walkthrough video of our tiny home. So come and take a look. So this is probably the most multifunctional part of the tiny home. This is our living room, our dining room, our office and our guest bedroom. The table goes right the way down to seat level and turns into a big king size bed which is more than enough space for guests to come over and chill. And yeah, this is kind of just where we eat and relax and chat and have fun. Okay, so this fancy looking plant pot holder is actually our Anave stove. It's a log burner. Um, we chose the Traveller, which is small and compact, but don't be fooled by its size. It kicks out some insanely uh, high temperatures. We had it well up into the sort of like high 20s. Um, we had it to the point where we traveled up to sort of like the north of the country it was like crazy snow outside and we had this bad boy burning and there was absolutely like no condensation in here it, it killed all the condensation out which was really great we were just sat around in like shorts and t-shirts and it was like looking out the window and it was snow and we we're like this is so bizarre but amazing at the same time also a side note as well um, we took the trailer off grid uh, during the summer and were able to cook on this so we saved all our battery power um, and you can actually lift it up and cook on the direct heat from the flames or you can put it back down have a bit more of a subtle heat here and these wings are great for keeping things warm even like your coffee cup in the morning which is which is totally ace okay so this is the first half of our kitchen um, appliance wise we've got our fridge it's got a little ice box up in the top corner um, your normal temperature gauge as you would on a household fridge We've got a vent on the side just to get the airflow moving around the whole thing. Um, a lot of campers and tiny homes say that they have like mildew and mould and stuff like that in the sort of casing. We haven't had any problems with that whatsoever so there must be a really good sort of airflow around that. Um, this runs on 12 volt as well so if you're off grid there's no problems with it draining the batteries, you know, just being on all the time. Um, we've also got our dual um, like hob top. Um, that's low wattage as well and our little convection oven so it's got like grill, oven, uh, you can do all your sort of toast everything like that in there um, you can bake in it uh, yeah so that's sort of fairly low wattage as well you can also bring it out on the top if you've got obviously we've got a little one running around so sometimes if we're using it and it's you know it's, it's hot we can put it up there so it's out of the way of him um, we've got a load of storage drawers all around as well, soft closure which is good for you know when you're towing it you don't want things rattling um, and then this is kind of like a bit of a luxury item but we can't kind of live without it really so it's really great for juices, smoothies, soups, um, we can make our like banana and ice cream and stuff like that in there and um, like nut butters things like that it's really great for making that and um, this kind of shows really this was kind of the tester like we've got our Victron um, charger inverter and it even takes the power of, of this and this is kind of a beast to, to use so we're, we're really happy that this was be able, able to be part of our, our kitchen really and then obviously we've got our little um, uh, Netherton foundry kettle which can be used on the uh, on the fire as well okay so every week we get questions on our insta and on our blog and stuff like that about you're in a tiny home, how do you do your washing? How do you do your drying? This is the mystery. Unraveled. It's just your average washing machine and your average tumble dryer, just a whole lot smaller. So we went for low wattage, obviously again, so that the uh, charger and inverter could take the, the power of it all. We've got a little three kilo um, washer and a little three kilo dryer. Um, we were gonna go for a condenser one on the dryer but you can't actually get condensers on this side so our pipe just comes out of there we just stick it out of the window it's no biggie um, <laughs> when we were measuring up and building the cabinets for the kitchen we kind of forgot to take into consideration the dials sticking out further so we kind of had to drill a little bit of a makeshift hole in there and uh, yeah so okay the key to tiny home living as well obviously is storage everything needs to be multifunctional so where we would have the normal plinth in the kitchen, we opted to do push out, pull out plinth drawers just so all the way along you've got extra storage because obviously it's paramount in a tiny space. 
Okay, this is our Truma Aventa. It's our air conditioner in the summer and our heater in the winter as well as the stove. Um, the really cool thing about this is we opted to get the iNet box with it as well. So when you're out at work or at the beach, in the car, whatever the sort of situation is, you can use your app, you can go into the remote control, preset the temperature to be either high or low depending on what you sort of need it to be. Um, it goes as low as 16 degrees, so you can be nice and chilled when you come in from a hot day, and it can go as high as 31 degrees when it's cold outside. So whichever way you want to use it, it's great for that. Okay, so this is kind of like a favorite part of ours in the kitchen. This is our Frank sink and tap. It's brushed brass, so it kind of goes with the vibe of all the other sort of goldy brassy bits on the trailer. Um, the sink is amazing. It, we wanted something that was huge but also light, which again, we had to kind of go with functionality and weight over design, etc. Um, it's stain resistant, which is amazing. However, if you look around the outside, you can see the dirty yellow ring. That's what you call a learning curve. So that was basically the silicone that we put in was clear. And over time, it's kind of, I don't know if it's oxidized or what, but it's basically just turned into like this horrible orangey yellow sort of colour so yeah that's a learning curve I will be stripping this off and replacing it with white silicone so that will look much more flush and clean okay so some of you might have seen us on Amazing Spaces um, what you wouldn't have seen was when the presenter George came in his first sort of reaction was he was like wow you guys you've used marble countertop surely that's going to be too heavy for towing etc and we were like ah that's where we kind of switched it up so we used a car um, a Carrera marble composite effect so it looks and feels like marble to the touch um, but it actually is about a quarter of the weight so that's a, a key sort of thing when you're towing it's flexible um, so when you're towing obviously it's got that movement so it's not going to be brittle um, and yeah it's it's durable it's it's everything you want from a countertop but like a lot lighter and, but it's still got the look, so it's great. So yeah, that was a little tiny home hack. Okay, so this is our bathroom. Very compact, but totally functional. We've got our Nature's Head composting loo, which is absolutely amazing. It vents out outside through all the pipe work and it's got an electric fan in it, so no stinky smells. We've got our Luso Stone shower, which was like, we wanted a little bit of sort of luxury touch in there. So we've gone for the matte black uh, version of that. There's our little alcove to put our shampoos, washing products, etc. We've got our window. It looks through to the bedroom, so it lets light through to the bedroom and vice versa, bedroom light through to the bathroom, because it's obviously such a small space. Um, if you move along a bit here, we've got our Luso stone tap as well to match the shower, so we've got the sort of continuity running through. And then down here, we've got all our storage for towels, cloth nappies, etc. for our toddler. Bedroom, we went for a super king size. Um, we co-sleep, so we wanted that extra room for a little one to be in with us. We've got storage down either side with cupboards and we've got a gas lift ottoman base, so we've got tons of storage underneath. Um, got a little skylight to let a bit of extra light through, which is great, and the little reading lamps. Um, after the programme where we said that we'd cut the mattress with a bread knife, we actually got inundated with offers from other mattress companies. However, we didn't want to go with something synthetic and sort of, uh, you know, non-sustainable. So we ended up opting and forking out quite a lot of money and bought a natural latex mattress, which is comfortable and, and it's beautiful. Um, we also drilled some holes down in the base just to let air flow through to the bed base so we don't get any mold or anything like that. So yeah. Here we've got our little activity board for our son. He was obviously a big part of being in here when we were doing the build and he loves fiddling around with tools and knickknacks and stuff. So we built a little uh, activity board for him to, to play around on without actually harming himself. And then underneath here, um, we've got our water tank. Um, so that's all the fresh water in under there. And then we've put a false bottom in inside there this all lifts up and we've got extra storage for clothes etc um, on top here it's a, an extra little bed so what we can do is we can put a side rail up and that's actually more than enough room for a toddler to sleep in and be safe and secure
Okay guys, so that pretty much sums up our tiny home tour. Hope you liked it. Any other questions, just uh, send us a message. Thank you very much. Bye.